So welcome to the Cape Computer Science Unit 1 specimen paper. This is the specimen paper that would be made active in 2022 onwards until the syllabus changes again. And the syllabus has changed up quite a bit in terms of the way that the questions are asked. And not really the way the questions are asked, but the amount of marks that the questions have. So I'm going to be working them out. And then when I'm finished working them out, we'll check the answers that the specimen paper has to see if there are any inconsistencies with my answers and their answers to see what they're looking for, what they were looking for, and sometimes how answering the way that you think may not be the way that they're looking for. So check it out and I hope that you learn something. All right, so let's go define the term algorithm. The an algorithm is a uh, set of steps to solve a problem in a finite amount of time. This is a step to solve a problem in a finite amount of time. Yeah, that's an algorithm. Next. Um, structured algorithms and programs are designed using three basic control stru structures. State all three. All right, sequence, selection, and looping. When they say state and have all these lines, I get concerned. But usually, that's a problem for IT. IT will give you plenty lines because they want it to write. Um, computer science, I don't know why they give you so much lines for, especially when the answer she just has like point form. But mm, we'll take it. Nobody's nobody's upset. All right, a secondary school conducting a survey on the popularity of certain colors. Students are asked to vote for any. Oh, this is the classic vote question. Vote on choices, red, blue, green, or none. If red or blue, this this is literal. No, this is our possible. This came from 2011 or 2010. I think this is 2010 or 2011. I've done this too many times. Like, you can't vote for none. Write the pseudocode to find and print the number of students who voted for each of the colors. Total number of students that voted for red, blue, and green. Yeah, this is the exact past paper question from one of those years. I assume that on the day of the survey, 150 students are present. Also, assume that all votes are valid. How much space we have? Oh, that's a little bit of space, comparatively speaking. All right, let's go start. You know, I should list all the variables. Let's do it the standard way algorithm to find the number of colors. No, number of votes. Yeah, variables. The variables we need to have here would be a vote, a counter, set the counter to zero, uh, total, set to zero. Then we need to find the total for each one, R total, blue total, and green total. Um, well, we'll see when we go to the answer sheet if they if they again given your marks for assigning variables well to initialize variables. We'll see, and then we have the grand total. Okay, good. So we start. So assume that all votes are valid. So we do not follow for one hundred fifty times. Four C is equal to one two one fifty do, and then we're going to say print. Please enter vote. After they enter the vote, we read the vote. Read V, right? Right, so we read the vote. And then now we have to do all of the ifs. Oh, that's a lot of ifs. Okay, so if vote equals red, then R RT is equal to RT plus one. And yeah, if vote is equal to blue. Blue total is equal to BT is equal to BT plus one. And then if vote is equal to green, GT is equal to GT plus one. And if vote is equal to none, actually we don't have to care if vote is equal to none, they just say um, if red, blue or green is not the favorite students vote for none but we don't have to keep track of none, they just want the number of students who voted for red, blue and green here yeah, it's exactly the same thing as the other, part, other people 
Okay, so we don't need to keep track of none. There's no need to part effort because it doesn't matter. All right, when we're done with that now, we would say T, the grand total. No, we just end the for loop. Yeah, we end for. And then when the for is finished, we say T is RT plus BT plus GT. That's the grand total. All right, so write the pseudocode to find and print. So we have to find and print it. Did we find it and print it? Okay. So print, um, print. The red total is RT, blue is VT, green is GT, and the grand total is T. Yeah, I think that's it there. That should be 10 marks. Um, did I leave out anything? No. Does not seem so. Okay. Let's check. Checking, checking. Alright, according to our answers, we had algorithm. Solution to a problem in a sequence of unambiguous steps. Yeah, step to solve a problem in a finite amount of time. Okay, boom. Sequential selection. Okay, so sequential selection repetition. Three marks. Cool. They have explanations for it. I guess if you explain it, they will still give you the mark. Because they have a one on for each one of them. And it's only three marks, so yeah. Okay. Right, so they did declare R count, B count, G count, and N count as zero. So that's one mark for that. You have your for loop. They didn't, they didn't declare the J though. Anyhow. Alright, so you have the for loop. That's good. You get the choice. And then for each one of them, you just... Uh, they have else if. Um, they did keep track of the, the non count. I wonder why, boy. Why do they why did they keep track of the non count? If you assume that all votes are valid, then keeping track of the non count wouldn't matter. Why would that be necessary? You see they have a mark for n count is equal to n plus one. N count plus one. Hmm. Is there a reason that they would do that? I think of a reason for keeping track of the n count. Because all votes are valid, we just just not counting the um the n count vote. Alright. And then they have print each one of the counts, good, and total, so one, no, one, note that the print command can have all the required info, right. The only thing that they have different here is they keep, kept track of the end count, but I didn't see the need to keep track of the end count because it wasn't going to get printed, and if even if the votes are valid, we would still get a vote call none, and it will just move on with life. The loop will just go again and ask for a new vote when they put none. Yeah, if I were an examiner, I would argue that the end count doesn't need to be counted for the pro for the um, requirements to be met. Okay. Good. Number two. Oh, no, sorry, number four. All right, construct a flowchart to represent the following algorithm. Prompt the number of days, read number of days, set data one, set total count to zero. While the is less than equal to num days to read items and so on. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. All we have to do is just draw the flowchart for it. Match the match the word city shape, which is literally what a flowchart requires you to do. Alright, so we go with start. To look at it as close as that's possible. All right, so we have the beginning of stuff. Right, so let's go with start prompt for number of these. That will be a parallelogram. Prompt for num these. All right. Read num these. Parallel, 
agak wajan set D to 1 that will be a rectangle because it's a rectangle uh, now we have a while loop so the while is going to be a diamond immediately immediately we have a diamond while D is less than or equal to num D is alright so while D is less than or equal to num D is do so we have a yes so yes, there is not here. There is um, less than equal to num days. Our job is to read number of items sold. Read num items sold. Then from here we have a if. So our if is a diamond. Our diamond is going to say if num items sold is less than 500. If the number of items sold is less than 500, we have a yes. Um, equal to num item so by four. Alright, so com is num item so by four. Else the no would be com for the num item so by five. Okay, end of right. Alright, so when that uh, those two end, they are going to meet up with total com is equal to total com plus com. Rectangle. Right. Then we're going to go to print com, which is going to be a parallelogram. And now we have to add one to D. Add one to D is a process. And that is now going to loop back up to here. All right, I need to get closer to do that loop properly. So we're going to go from here and loop. All right, we need to loop back up there. And then the end while, wow, the end while is just one thing, which is print num days. Total com and then stop. All right, think that's it there. We work hard for our 12 marks, but basically, you just have to follow the flow chart. Or oh, they wanted to do the flow chart right underneath there. Okay, let's see if I could actually leave it at the side there. If I want to have to explain this again, it will be at the right hand side. Okay, so this is our flow chart. Nothing too difficult. Actually, it's very easy. All right, an algorithm is shown below. Read J, sum is equal to zero, while J is less than six, sum is equal to sum plus J, print J. This, this, is a, this is a question from another paper already too. No? It's look like it could have been from 2014, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there was one of these, one of these questions. All right, what would the algorithm print given the line of input data below? What would the algorithm print given the line of input data below? Okay, so let's say we put in a three. Read J, if J is three. Actually, I'll just do a trace table fit. J, oh, J and sum. Those are our two variables. Alright, so j is 3, sum will be 0, that will start us off. Then we say while j is less than 6, a is j less than 6, yes, sum is equal to sum plus j, so 3 plus 0 will be 3. Print j. Okay, so it will print out 3. Okay, that was the first time. Then we'll read a new j, we'll get the 2 inside, 2. Is j less than 6? Yes, so sum is equal to sum plus j. 3 plus 2 will be 5. Print j, which will be 2. Then we have 1. 1 as j. Sum is equal to sum plus 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. Print j, which is 1. 
and then five is five less than six. Yes, it is. So six and five is eleven. Then we have five. Then you're gonna get seven. Once you get the seven, the condition will not be met because seven is not less than six. So then our output will be it will print sum is equal to oh no, it's sum plus g. My bad. Oh no, I am correct. Yeah, sum is equal to eleven. Three, four, five, six, six and five is eleven. Yeah. It will just print eleven. How much marks for this? Three marks. I'm very interested to see how they how they're pulling all the marks for this. <laughs> because they didn't tell you to do the trace table, they just say what would the algorithm print given the input. So if you just put sum is equal to eleven, you get three marks. I doubt. Let me see if the flowchart line up. Flowchart. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, right, just they put their stuff on the left hand side. I couldn't call it. Flowchart is good. Oh, I didn't put it 3, 2, 1. It did say print G. Yeah, so it should print 3, 2, 1. Yeah, should have seen that. It will print the value of three, a G as 3, 2, 1. Wait, why wouldn't it print the 5 though? It should print the 5. If 5 is less than 6, then sum is equal to sum. It should go up to 11. What? How do you get sum as 6? You all see now they right. They have sum as six. I am perturbed. If five is one of the numbers that you're getting in, which is reg, is five less than six? Yes. So that means it should add five to the sum. So you should get eleven, and then you print g, which so you're supposed to print three, two, one, and five because all those will be accepted. Is only when you reach seven it will not go on. Yeah. So that wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. That's really sad. That the specimen paper is wrong. That's such a simple question. Oh well, right, so you're supposed to get 3, 2, 1, and 5, and then sum is equal to 11. That's good there. Ah, CXC, CXC, CXC. You never cease to amaze us. Alright, that's module 2. Right, so of course, thanks for watching. You made it to the end. If you're looking for Cape IT classes that you want me to teach, you can check us out at education.makeitsimplett.com and you will see all the different packages that we have for Cape IT classes. And of course, you can always come back to this YouTube channel and there will always be free videos here to explain different things to you. But if you want dedicated classes that will explain certain things to you and make sure you understand the syllabus inside out, then check us out, education.makeitsimplett.com You'll see Cape IT and we have a various um, set of classes from crash courses all the way down to full-on classes with assignments and IA assistance and paper 3 assistance. So you can check that out, um, makeitsimplett.com